Smallpox has been around for at least 10,000 years, ever since man has started living in cities. It's, it's probably a contender for one of our oldest diseases. It probably killed Ramses V, it may have been responsible for the Antonine Plague in Rome, and infamously killed many millions of Native Americans when it made its way to the New World. Which, by the way, is the subject of a video that myself and Anguilla Mations have worked on over on his channel. Now, despite the trend of avoiding your vaccines, especially here in the old People's Republic of Portland, uh, smallpox has famously been eradicated by the vaccinations after Edward Jenner's discovery that cowpox would immunize people against the disease. Which was an absolutely incredible medical achievement. As Thomas Jefferson said at the time in 1800, every friend of humanity must look with pleasure on this discovery by which one more evil is withdrawn from the condition of man. Wise words, Jefferson. However, Jenner was inspired by a much older, a much more dangerous procedure, a procedure he himself underwent, that procedure is called variolation. Variolation is a kind of inoculation, but rather than use the cowpox virus like Edward Jenner discovered, people would use the real, live, full-blown smallpox virus. Crazy stuff. The earliest reference we have to variolation comes from China in around the year 1550. The medieval Chinese had realized that people who survived smallpox pretty much never got it again. You'd basically been granted immunity by surviving it. So the Chinese tried to induce a mild case of smallpox, and to do this, they basically collected the smallpox scabs from patients who had survived with mild cases. They would grind it up into a powder and uh, blast it up the patient's nose using a straw. Sounds absolutely vile. The Muslim world in the Middle Ages had also realized that smallpox survivors were pretty much granted lifelong immunity. And in the Ottoman Empire, the procedure known as Dak el Jedri involved making a small scratch along the arm of a patient. Into that scratch, they would put the pus from a smallpox survivor, usually a young boy who had a very mild case. They'd cover the scratch with a walnut shell or something like that to keep it safe and clean. The patient would get a mild case of smallpox and survive. Now, reports of this crazy foreign procedure had been reaching England since about the 17th century, but the medical establishment pretty much thought it was pure quackery. They were not going to mess with any of that foreign nonsense. That is until Lady Mary Wortley Montagu, the wife of the ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, became a convert to the procedure. She had lost her brother to smallpox in 1712, and herself in 1715 had been horrifically scarred by smallpox despite surviving. She was covered in pox marks, all her eyelashes had fallen out. She wasn't looking that good, to be honest. Noticing that the women of the Ottoman Empire were not horrifically scarred like she was, she learned about the process of variolation and incredibly experimented on her own children without telling her husband until it was all safe, they both survived. So all's well that ends well, but Lady Montague, you're a risk taker. Thanks to her friendship with the British royal family, the procedure started to gain acceptance. And from the mid sort of 18th century, it was really being practiced across Britain. Before the royal family would agree to this uh, new form of procedure though, they actually conducted an experiment on six condemned prisoners. These prisoners were due to be hanged, but they pulled them out of prison and said, if you undergo this experimental medical treatment uh, and survive, we'll basically let you off. The six prisoners underwent variolation, they survived, and that was that. However, it wasn't until after the procedure that one of the prisoners revealed he had already caught smallpox as a child and knew he was going to survive. Can't really blame the guy, I'd jump at the chance to escape a hanging. What can you do? Despite the fact that variolation was getting more and more popular, it had a serious fatal flaw. First flaw is that English doctors in the 18th century hadn't quite gotten over the whole purging and bloodletting that was so popular in medieval Europe. So before they would variolate someone, they insisted they went on a weeks long purge, bloodletting, starvation. We know that's a terrible idea now. You're 
really weakening your patient. So when they variolated them, it was not as successful perhaps as it had been in China and the Ottoman Empire. They estimate about one in 50 patients died from being variolated, which is still much better than smallpox. If you catch smallpox just by the by, you got a 50-50 shot of surviving. If you're from the New World, you're pretty much boned, guaranteed. So it was a big improvement nonetheless. One family of doctors called the Suttons had a special technique which they claimed had only killed five patients out of the 40,000 they had treated. What is their special recipe, their special treatment, you ask? No bloodletting, no purging, eat a healthy diet and get lots of rest. Now, they kept that secret for about 34 years until it was revealed in one of their books in 1796 because <laughs> you can't let saving lives get in the way of making tons of money. Whee! I had it, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Variolation's real fatal flaw, though, was the fact that although it inoculated the patient against smallpox, everyone else around them was exposed to the live smallpox virus, which was incredibly dangerous. We'll never know how many patients died from contact with uh, the survivors of variolation, but safe to say it was thousands and thousands of people. Fortunately for history, 18-year-old Edward Jenner survived his variolation experience, went on to discover the cowpox vaccine, which had the bonus of not only curing you of smallpox, but also not killing everyone you love. So that's about it really. Moral of the story, I suppose, is you should definitely take your vaccine, so it'll save your bloody life. Definitely go and check out Angulimation's uh, video on smallpox in the new world that we've made together. Like, subscribe, skilly-do. See ya.